Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, this is Everyday Artist. I'm Eve and today I am going to be doing a little basic watercolor. I am by no means an expert at watercolor, uh, but I know uh, how difficult it can be to try to learn new uh, new um, media like if you look at watercolors and you're like oh those are so beautiful and I do that all the time and so every day I uh, try to learn more about different types of art and I encourage you to explore uh, media that sometimes frustrates you and it's, sometimes it's easier to start simple and so we're uh, we're going back to basics now watercolor can be very difficult um, most of you experimented with it as a child uh, but as a child they just give it to you to use to be able to put down your your uh, thoughts and um, pictures uh, no instruction on how the media actually works is given at that time because that isn't the purpose um, but neither do you need to start with very expensive um, materials when you're trying to decide if you even like watercolor to, to paint not to you know look at of course you could like it to look at and not want to paint it we're going to work on this simple uh, uh, bird picture here and I'll show that again to you in a minute um, we're using I'm using Strathmore I like Strathmore but I'll buy just about anything I don't care about the brand um, uh, this happens to be a cold press which I do prefer but you don't need to worry so much ab about that to begin with most of them are cold press and they have Strathmore has different series and they tell you uh, whether it is better best you know and this one happens to be best but it comes in lower qualities and the lower qualities uh, do cost a little bit less not tons less but a little bit less this one is as you see not very expensive I got it at Hobby Lobby but you can find them at Michaels um, any of your you know even Walmart sells um, watercolor paper and um, I I suggest you start with a small pad uh, so you don't overwhelm yourself and start with simple subjects um, as for the watercolors themselves I picked this up these are cake watercolors, much, very much like what you had as a youngster. But of course, so there's a lot more variety of colors in here. And there are tube watercolors. This is an inexpensive, I think these are also Hobby Lobby. Yeah, they're fine touch instead of master's touch from Hobby Lobby. And it's just a, a basic starter set of of watercolor and the tube watercolors they come with the little um, there it is the little uh, point and you just open it up and and turn it upside down to prick the top of the of the tube uh, you need very 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 little of this in order to paint and you can get the palettes you put your colors in the different wells and you can mix here in the middle and I bought this set it's four was four of these and some lids for them usually I don't need the lids but you know if you want to have them not dry out on you if you, ha you get have to walk away from your paints put a lid on it and you can also if you use this for your acrylic paints you can put a, a lid on it um, to try to keep them from drying 
um, quickly. I live in Phoenix. Drying paints is a real issue. Um, if you do put acrylics on these plastic palettes like this, remember to wash it as soon as possible or you will never get it, the color off. And you would want to keep one for acrylics and one for watercolor, what have you. I'm going to be using these uh, cake acrylics uh, today. And uh, get a, it doesn't have to be round, just a larger uh, paintbrush and a little one. Uh, there's another, this one comes with a paintbrush in the kit as well. So let's get started. Now, I am going to, for the background, I am going to use um, this color mixed with this color. And if you don't have exactly these colors or you're using um, tubes, you would want to use a combination of like perhaps the yellow ochre and uh, a burnt umber. But again, you don't need very much. You don't need very much at all. And you do want a pencil. You're going to draw very lightly so you know where not to put water. So put your, you can draw from your memory. I like using pictures. Um, so this is his beak, that's his tail. So just, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to look at your picture and go, well, that doesn't look like that. Just draw as best you can. This is a silhouette. It doesn't have to be perfect. Draw very lightly. Do not press hard at all because it mars the paper and you can never undent it. This little bird in the middle is... is not coming out to my liking <laughs> and and I just I'm not worried about erasing or um, you know trying to make it perfect just you just need a general idea you're going to end up kind of covering over it a little bit and then I'm not going to put him straight in a line over here because I would run off the page I'm going to put it in a different spot. It doesn't matter, but I do want to keep three. And I probably want to come in with that a little bit. Um, ordinarily, I would go ahead and erase this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. You can't erase it after. You can't erase it afterward. Uh, because you would end up erasing your paint. Um, that little spot right there, now you notice my pencil doesn't have an eraser. This little spot right here will end up showing up in the painting. Uh, watercolors are transparent. Now anybody who's painted on uh, watercolor paper or any paper painted with watercolor you see things like this right and uh, it curls there are some ways that you can combat that um, you can press it after it's completely dry you can press it under um, under some heavy books or something um, before you paint it you can use a a uh, low tack tape and tape it to a hard surface like masonite or something which is what they taught me to do in in art school move this pencil so it's not annoying me okay so let's get started uh, pick up your larger brush 
and I'm going to put it in that yellowish color that I showed you but it's going to be off the screen because oh sorry um, so I'm just gonna when I get more paint that's all I'm doing and uh, I'm going to paint the lighter stuff first, so I'm not going to mix it right now. And I want a lot of water on my brush. And I'm going to go through and just kind of block it out a little bit. You don't have to be real exact, but you don't want to go to your bir over your birds. That's why you drew them. If you did, it's a dark color that we're going to use over it. It's not a tragedy. Uh, don't stress about it and you see how it's getting dry again right now um, you can use pick up some more water and it will continue to spread out don't be afraid to go get some more paint but always remember to put water on it and you want to kind of keep the brush strokes very loose because these are clouds. There is a product called Frisket. If you have a something in mind that is far more detailed you can um, you can use frisket and that is a paint on uh, well you can get one that you cut too but usually it's a paint on um, product and you just paint it where you don't want any um, where you don't want any paint to go and it'll prevent the the watercolor from sticking there much like when you're dyeing an Easter egg using the little wax crayon to write stuff and then you dye it and it's you know no dye sticks there so after that after you paint the rest of your subject you take a, um, a special kind of um, What is, it's not the word eraser, but it's kind of like eraser. It looks like the bottom of a, a gummy shoe. What, what are those called? Oh, gosh, I don't remember. And um, you, it, you just use it, rub on it, and it picks it up without marring the paper. Um, if uh, I'm not explaining it very well. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I don't normally use Frisket, so... Uh, so I can't recall what it's called right now and I am getting the paint fairly wet and I'm actually going to add more water later when I'm adding the darker clouds and stuff uh, because we want to have those clouds be uh, organic we don't want them to be very structured um, or they won't look very much like clouds so I'm just putting the first base layer in here and it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture this is just a, a our version of the picture so don't stress too much about having it look exactly like the picture like this right here got a little dark and um, that's just gonna have to be fine so now I, re I recall that uh, I meant to use yellow. So I'm going to put my paintbrush, I've rinsed it in the water. I'm going to put it in this bright yellow. And I'm going to put some yellow in here. You don't have to be very exact. Um, because if you try to be perfect with it and if you try to get it exactly in the right spot it's going to look forced and not like clouds I'm 
but I am continuing to get the paper wet. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow up in here and I'm still trying to avoid I'm still trying to avoid the the birds and that's all I'm doing I'm avoiding trying to go right up to those pencil lines but not inside the pencil lines and some of that you're going to have to take time and just kind of go very carefully and see I forgot that's why I would have erased that before because I forgot that I should go in here and I want some more of this Is that yellow was a little bright okay so now we're going to start adding in the darker clouds and I'm putting a lot of water on my paintbrush a lot of water you see the big drips because I want the paper very wet for this next step and it doesn't have to be everywhere just where the uh, where you're gonna put the darker color That almost looks like I forgot to put the original color there. Put some of it. <laughs> it looks white. Um, so, and and don't be afraid to go back and say, oh, you know what? I don't really like the way that color turned out. You can just fix it. So, if I discover that this isn't wet, I can always add more water if it's not wet enough. So now I'm going to get this darker color with a lot of water on. A lot of water with my paint very wet and I'm gonna put it and let it see how it blooms with the water well that's very frustrating if you don't want it to do that but here we want it to do that so we're gonna be very happy when it starts spreading out and if it doesn't add more water And it shouldn't go into the bird. It should just stay wherever it's wet. And I'm just going to add some more of this color in here to blend it together. This uh, lighter color. Now, if it goes over a bird tail or something like that, it's not a tragedy. Like I said, the bird is going to be dark, so it'll go over it. Uh, watercolor being transparent you can paint dark over light but not light over dark I'm taking that paint and I mixed it a little bit on the on the uh, paints if you take your paint and you mix it if you take it and mix it together like this be sure that afterward, after you're done painting, you wipe off those little um, you wipe off those little cakes so that they don't stay mixed color. And if you don't, next time you wet them, you can just clean them then. done with this part
and it doesn't look exactly like like the picture and I'm fine with that it I just want it to look my version of the picture okay so the next step here uh, you'd want to make sure that there's no hard edges to your puddles if you see a hard edge just kind of blend it with some water and I'm gonna call this done with this portion of the of the painting now you need to set it aside to dry before you can do anything else and um, so we don't have to wait for this to dry here, even here in Phoenix that would take some time because it's pretty wet in some parts I have one partially painted because I don't want to run out of time now I just dropped my painting on the floor I mean my picture so we're gonna go ahead with how we have it I'm gonna use this blue uh, there this blue and it is transparent so it won't be super dark and you don't use as much paint as much water and just very carefully follow your outlines and you should still be able to see them even if you painted over it a little bit and don't worry about the fact that it's very blue don't worry about the fact that it's transparent we're going to work on that I'm guessing where my bird is because I dropped my my painting everything about him but um, hopefully you will find a picture that you like and you don't drop it on the floor I would get down and get it except I would have to move the tripod and that would be inconvenient especially since I can't push the pause button because the tripod's in the way okay so now I'm mixing black in with my blue I went ahead and painted a, the outline to give kind of a bumper so that I, then I'm just painting in in basically in the lines like coloring book and this should be thinner but I'm not gonna. Um, I had an art teacher who told me, he said, at one point you're gonna have to realize that you're not making it better, you're just making it different. You need to stop. <laughs> that none of us are ever happy with our artwork. We always look at it with a more critical eye than the rest of the world. And honestly, if somebody tells you something, and I'm not talking about loving criticism to help you improve your work. I'm talking about ugly criticism. Just ignore them. It's not worth it. Most people paint for their love of painting, not for any other reason. And it feels good when other people like it too but don't let other people tell you your own worth okay so you saw me turning the painting I need you to remember that um, your painting isn't nailed down you can move you can move it to make it more convenient for you you do not need to have it you know right side up or whatever now if it's more easier for you to do it one direction and not turning it that's great but 
it's hard for me to get the lines correct or the sharpness of the lines correct if I'm trying to twist my arm around you know weird directions so oops I made his tail too fat oh well I'll make it longer And with acrylics or pastels or Prismacolor or what have you, it takes time and patience to learn any new, any new thing. And you're going to make a lot of stuff that you don't like before you make plenty of stuff that you do like. Now, I have a lot of white edges around him, which I really don't like. And so when, when the bird is dry, I can go back and fix some of that if I decide to, much like we waited for this to dry. And of course, I'm I'm unhappy with the fact that I made his tail too fat. But nobody is ever going to paint something perfect every time. And the only person that knows that I wanted to paint that well now you <laughs> that I wanted to paint that differently than it came out was would be me. And ordinarily. I don't tell anybody that it came out differently than I wanted it to. And because of the white edges, I'm just kind of filling it out a little more and seeing, you know, looking at it critically and going, well, could I make that a little fatter? Could I make that a little bigger? Um, I may need to put a second coat on once this dries. Probably will need to put a second coat on. You notice this has a lot less water, and that's why it's thicker. That's why it's. Um, that's why it's covering up the other paint so well. All right. So yeah, I am going to definitely need to put a second coat. <laughs> But we're going to call that done for this. And then the last thing you do is go ahead and sign it. Develop a signature for yourself. Um, my acrylic paintings, I usually sign uh, with a Sharpie. Just because it's hard to get the acrylic to behave when, for small things. So, and yes, that's my signature. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. Uh, I hope uh, you will try new things and try watercolors, try acrylics, try, you know, many new uh, media for, for doing your art. You, you never know when you're going to stumble across something that you didn't think you would like and you really do like. So like I did with watercolor. Um, I'm still learning. I'm still trying. Uh, I, you know, did it in art school and uh, loved it. Uh, I like gouache better, um, and I can do a thing on gouache uh, in the future. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoy my contact, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.